internet, it's Andrew Michael, and welcome to this week's Andrew Michael Podcast, episode 4, where today we are going to be talking about why Power Rangers should move to a streaming service like Netflix, like Discovery, like Paramount Plus, versus staying on Nickelodeon in 2022. And if you are interested in seeing more content from me, where Power Rangers and Super Sentai is highlighted, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, and shout out to the Patreons if you go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash andrewmichael2, whereas for a little as $3 a month, you will get early access with the podcast. You will get this a day earlier before it is published here on youtube and also you can find this podcast now on soundcloud make sure to check those soundcloud link out in the description now with that being said let's get into today's topic why power rangers should move to a streaming service so if you don't know back in 2019 was where we got beast morpher starting to air at 7 o'clock in the morning, Central Standard Time. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know a whole lot of people that would be willing to wake up that early to watch a television show. Now, normally, some people, like most people, would probably sleep in until like maybe 9, maybe 10, you know, because of the work week. Sometimes it gets really stressful. Sometimes it gets really tiring during the week. And sometimes you just want to sleep in on Saturdays and not have to wake up so early. Well, unless you're trying to watch Power Rangers, in which case sleep and uh, sleeping in late is, uh, (laughs) yeah, not an option. With that, now you have to watch Power Rangers that early. And you can't see it on another television station except for that one time. Now, if you don't remember from Megaforce, Super Megaforce, Dino Charge, Dino Super Charge... Basically, they would air the show at like 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, really late into the morning where people, most people were awake and everyone was ready to watch Power Rangers. And if you missed that one episode, you had a chance to watch it, I think on Nicktoons, I think one of their like sub channels that you could find if you had like a big Comcast or AT&T package where you could get all those exclusive channels and you would be able to watch it at like seven o'clock at night, which was really cool at the time because if you had errands to do during the day then you'd be able to catch up on it now if they put it on a streaming service you would be able to watch it on demand meaning they could bulk put stuff out there like episode one to three could be out there and then in about uh, maybe a week or two they'll put post four through six and then so on and so on and the reason why this would be good is then you could be able to watch the episodes at any point in time during the day so you wouldn't have to wake up so early to watch the episodes And also, it would be, you know, it'd be on a streaming service, so you wouldn't have to have cable to watch it. You would just have to have that streaming service subscription and an internet connection, and boom, you'd be able to watch Power Rangers at whatever time. Now, one thing I've also seen in the comment section from when I've been talking about this is some people just don't have Netflix, and I understand that kind of argument i don't have netflix at the moment either but i have things like disney plus you have amazon prime so you get amazon video i don't have apple tv but i don't have paramount plus either so i mean it really would just depend on what service they would go to now another thing that i've heard is well what about disney plus now i don't think disney plus now that i think about it would be a good option because if If Disney were to have kept Power Rangers, obviously they would have been under the impression that Power Rangers would have made Disney money. You know, that's the reason why Disney has a bunch of stuff under its belt is because they know that the things on Disney Plus are going to bring them in views. And the more people that watch their stuff for Disney, the more money that Disney makes. And as we saw with Power Rangers, unfortunately getting into the late 2000s and with uh, Jungle Fury and RPM, Disney literally just did not care about Power Rangers and if they didn't care about Power Rangers then they probably don't care about it now which was interesting because you see how much it sold for with Hasbro where Hasbro bought it for 500 million dollars which is a lot of money for Power Rangers and it shows that Hasbro really does care about Power Rangers but speaking of things that don't care about Power Rangers it is clearly evident that Nickelodeon just does not care about power rangers anymore it is clear they don't 
look at whenever Power Rangers is airing. You'll see stuff like the Drama Club. Every time I watched Power Rangers, I would see like five or six adverts for Drama Club that will be airing at 7 o'clock at night. Or whatever TV show that Nickelodeon was airing later at Saturday night when people were at home, when people were out doing stuff, when kids were at home, when kids were, you know, watching their favorite streamers or all this kind of stuff, they would be at home watching kids shows at that time. Now, of course, with Nickelodeon, you know, if they did care about Power Rangers, they would try to promote that. But, unfortunately, they just don't. Like, I remember also from a poll that was going around and Power Rangers won some kind of, um, it was like some kind of voting thing, like some award they won with Nickelodeon. And still, even then, Nickelodeon has not promoted Power Rangers whatsoever. And it's sad because it's like, there are people that still care about Power Rangers. And I've even noticed this. If you go looking on Hasbro Pulse, or if you go looking on Amazon, or eBay, or Walmart, toys, in some degree, are being sold out. Now, it could be with the Lightning Collection, it could be with some Dino Fury toys. I mean, these things are flying off the shelf. So, it's not like Power Rangers isn't selling toys in 2021, because if they weren't selling toys, Hasbro wouldn't have bought Power Rangers in the first place. But it shows that there is value still in Power Rangers in 2021. But it just shows that with Nickelodeon, in terms of TV deals, they just don't care. And that's the sad thing. Nickelodeon would be doing so much better if they would promote Power Rangers because you bring in new eyes with it. That's the thing with me being a Power Rangers slash Super Sentai content creator is that we are bringing in new eyes to Power Rangers. Now, obviously, in 2022, 2023, we're going to see a lot of creative ideas that Hasbro comes up with because if you don't know, Hasbro and Toei are going to be splitting up. So in 2022 and 2023, they're going to be on their own. And so it is going to be very fascinating to see what Hasbro does in the future without having Toei and Super Sentai to bounce ideas from. Now, one thing that would have been cool if they had the same deal is to see the adaptation of Kira Maja, which a lot of people thought was going to be adapted until we saw where they were splitting up with Toei. So obviously now the whole... What are they going to adapt in 2023 is out of the window because if they're not in a deal with Toei and they use stuff that Hasbro hasn't done with some Super Sentai related shows, they might land in hot water in that case. But if it comes to Dino Fury, I don't necessarily see Toei trying to sue them if they've already had one season of Dino Fury and they're already filming the second season of Hasbro. Or second season of Dino Fury Season 2, excuse me. So with that, it really brings up the question, what is Hasbro going to do in 2023? Now, I've had discussions with people where they think that in 2023, there's going to be the big movie. Which is going to be really huge to see where Hasbro and Power Rangers is in 2023. Now, I do think that in 2023, with the movie, I'm hoping that it's going to do better than the 2017 movie. As we saw with the 2017 movie, it barely made it over budget. So in terms of sales with the movie, the 2017 movie just didn't get enough people to watch it. But there was still some interest in Power Rangers at that time. Now, with a lot more people getting interested with Beast Morphers and with Dino Fury... And what they could possibly be doing with 2023, I do think that for this movie to do well, they're going to have to sign maybe a splashy actor, like someone that's been in a Marvel movie or someone that's been in a DC movie. Like, what would be really insane? And this is probably never, ever, ever going to happen. But what if Power Rangers and the uh, Marvel Avengers did a crossover? All right, hear me out. Hear me out. Imagine if you're watching the latest Avengers movie and then at the end credits, because we all know how Marvel is with their end credits, you see this shot of a power coin from the Power Rangers and then we get a Power Rangers and Marvel Avengers crossover. I think if they did a Power Rangers and Marvel Avengers crossover, that would be epic. That would be Freaking epic for Power Rangers because you are bringing in a huge audience 
of Marvel Avengers fans to Power Rangers. And with, you know, the talks of there being a more PG-13 Power Rangers show coming in the near future in 2023, it's going to be very fascinating to see the direction that Hasbro is going with Power Rangers. And with Power Rangers being on a streaming service, it's going to bring more eyes onto Power Rangers. And with more eyes on the show, the more likely people are going to buy merchandise. And still, even in 2020 month, merchandise is huge, all right? Even today, kids are buying their favorite streamer shirt. They're buying their favorite content creator's mugs. They're buying their favorite content creator's toys. People are still willing to buy merchandise. And with that, kids are still willing to buy Power Ranger toys. And we're still seeing that people are still buying Power Ranger toys. Now, I've even seen some uh, some Amazon reviews where people would say, Oh, I bought this for my grandson. And it would last for about a week or two. And then he stopped playing with it, right? But that's the thing with Power Rangers Dino Fury is it's kind of harkening back to Super Mega Force and with Dino Supercharge and with Ninja Steel where you have to keep buying these separate little coins and these separate little power keys to get these different sounds and whatnot. I think that's cool that Hasbro is doing that. That way it's like, oh, you're not stuck with three or four different sounds with this morpher. If you get these kind of keys, then you get different kind of sounds, which is almost like a gotta catch them all kind of deal where you have to have all these separate little toys. And with it being on a streaming service, again, I point back to this, you're giving Power Rangers to a bigger service. Now, that was my thing, but the odd thing about it is why did Hasbro take off all the legacy stuff with Power Rangers? If you did not see early this year, they Hasbro and, ne and Netflix, they had a kind of a disagreement with things. And with that, they took off seasons from Alien all the way to, I believe it was Dino Charge. Because I believe they left Ninja Steel and they left Beast Morphers and they're leaving Dino Fury up. They are posting Dino Fury to Netflix. So anyone that has not been seeing it on Nickelodeon is going to have a chance to watch Power Rangers Dino Fury, which is another reason why I say they should move it because people that are not in the United States, they're going to be able to watch Dino Fury. But the weird thing is, it's kind of like Beast Morphers where we saw with 2020 and 2020 where episodes were airing early in some areas. Like I believe it was Germany or Britain or somewhere. They were seeing episodes early and we were able in the United States to go on places like Facebook or places like these websites where you can still be able to watch these episodes and even on YouTube if you miss a, a airing of an episode people they're sneaking around trying to post Power Ranger Dino Fury episodes and the views are going well which means it's not the fact that people are not going to watch Dino Fury period it's the fact that people are willing to watch Dino Fury it's just that at the time that they are airing on Nickelodeon is just an awful airing time and with it only being open to being shown on television once a week at that early time that's why they're dropping in viewership because no one's able to watch Power Rangers and when I was asking people in my stream if they like Power Rangers or not they said yeah it's pretty cool but nothing is like super splashy or interesting to them which this is the thing I do believe Power Rangers can be the next splashy thing it's just it's got to be trendy out there they could get influencers to start talking about it shoot that's what they could do they could just start paying big influencers to talk about about Power Rangers like someone can like someone from Haskell can be like all right let's sponsor some favorite YouTubers or let's sponsor some favorite streamers and get them talking about Power Rangers Battle for the Grid Power Rangers Legacy Wars Power Rangers this I mean Power Rangers easily could be the next trending thing with people and with kids in the future so my I'm leaving this up to you what do you think? Do you think Power Rangers should move to a streaming service or should they stay on Nickelodeon? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm Andrew Michael, and I will see you in the next one. Go, go, Power Rangers.